Hey traders, it's Palmer from Bank to Trade. It is May 29th, 2019. I'm one of the part-time moderators and part-time trader on AwesomeCallsTrading.com. This is my site, Bank to Trade. What is this? I don't know. Don't tell my wife I said that. Anyway, interesting. Oh, so, um, yeah, back to stock. So, yeah, I took two trades today. Uh, both were pre-market, Kara and Goose. Um, with Kara, there was, I mentioned this in Twitter, it was up, uh, I, what I thought was a little bit too much. It was up 350 on a phase three itching study. And I immediately jumped on that one, and it was in AJ's list as well. So in Kara, they had positive results. It was gapping up a pretty good bit, and AJ was looking for a little bit more pop at the open towards 22 or 23 for a slow fader to 19. And uh, to short the stock, one to two points to the downside. So on pre-market, I came in the room with a position open because this moved up, down, and back up so fast. It was, what, 6.30. It was still pretty early, and I took a short. My first short, I took 300 at this 21.35 area up here, came in the room, said, hey, I'm short. Uh, even though Janny already had it on screen, they were already talking about it, but there was plenty of room left to get back, get back into this. So I brought this down for about a point. Me being part-time, I'm doing this before work, actually, out with $300 right there about an hour and a half before the bell even starts. Could have been done right there, all right? But pre-market, this started creeping back up again. And I was looking, I wanted to reshort this, even though you're not supposed to do that. You don't go to the well too many times. But it made its way back to the 22 area, and Fire said he was shorting it. I'm getting a sell signal on my 5 and 10 minute chart also in this area. So I get in with 200 right at the uh, at, 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 at 9, 9, sorry, 852 right in this area, and it tanked hard. I wanted this to come up. These are the trades right here. I made about, what, 350 on this. So I'm going to get rid of this. But I wanted this bar. This came down so fast. I wanted this to creep back up before I got in just to get some of that back. I managed to get in a little bit better, um, but then it started hanging on right here. And at about 9.30, I had stuff to do work weight or work related, so I couldn't watch it. I bailed out basically at even. Okay, and then of course, it snaps. Okay, it comes down a point and change right here, but you know, it is what it is. That's the way it goes. All right, and so then the upgrades start coming in, or the maintains start coming in. You get um, a 28 to 35 from Needham. And then Wainwright comes in there, raised it to 28 from 26. Big deal. So AJ was mentioning that also, um, that it's probably, it's more than likely going to be held up because of that. Even though the news is, you know, it's great if you're a long-term investor, but you, things like this usually fade off. But because these upgrades came in that were, you know, not even worth mentioning, still they were getting maybe the 35 from or from 28 to 35 from Needham. Either way, it was starting to get held up. And in AJ's pre-market notes, he's looking for an offering to come on this, and so look for this to get an offering in the next day or so. Um, so, you know, be careful if you're swinging this, because this has a potential to drop pretty hard on the offering, but that was a good play. Um, I wanted this snap, I just had things to do, and I couldn't hold it, which was unfortunate, because that would have been a nice chunk of change on this stock. The other play was Goose. Goose had pretty bad earnings. I need to reread those, because... From, I guess I missed something in the notes. Or AJ, I don't have the same feed that AJ does because I thought the earnings were kind of not terrible or not too bad, but I need to review this. Either way, um, earnings disaster, stocks gabbing down seven bucks. AJ's looking to uh, nibble along at 40, room to 38. 
uh, looking to bounce to 43, top it off, fade it. If it yanks hard, uh, 37, 38, look to go long to short cover bounce. So I got in on this. I was uh, Janny was saying that he was seeing a bottom. I was seeing the same thing. 150 shares. You know, I took a starter here because it's still pre-market, and the, the call was at 8 o'clock. So I got in about 20 minutes before the call, which can be, you know, iffy or I don't want to say iffy, but let me get this out of here. You're still not there. Bad earnings, it's coming down. So let me get this volume off the screen to show you something. Because ugh, to get in on that bounce, now it's pre-market, it's selling off. But if you started to watch this area, you have the most amount of volume, even though I got in before these spikes, that's starting to come in off this bottom. Okay, so it's either covering or people trying to get in on the cheap because it's down so hard. I had a long-term support at 40 area and at the 39. It was getting close to that. Little volume ticking in there, so I get in with that small starter of 150 shares because it's down so hard I want to give it room to come down all right and AJ is calling this he's writing these notes up right about in here okay this is 825 so he's writing these notes up to buy basically in this area okay so if you took his advice and you were buying in this area it made it to 42 and you bought it 40 50 or 41 and you got a point you're done Okay, that's it. That's the entire trade. Don't get greedy. Yeah, it's down hard, but the market is pulling also at the same time. So this has the potential to, basically every stock has the potential to yank if they've got bad news in front of it. So, you know, I'm still trying to watch Kara at the open because it's ticking back up and I wanted to sell that again. And I've got a position open at the bell, which I... You know, if you've done this before, if you have one or two positions open at the bell and you're trying to watch other stocks opening also, that can be pretty damn tricky. Okay, so I got in, you know, 150 shares on a stock like this is not going to pay the mortgage. So I bought it 41.24 right here. I sell it at 42 at this top area right here because that's what 76 cents on 150 shares there's 110 bucks doing this part-time plus the care trade I'm right under $500 for the day a minute after the open okay so I can be I can call it a day right there all right but the stock yanks okay and AJ saying that this could yank at the open which it did but there is absolutely no support in this for buying at all the only signals that I got was about 10.55 after reviewing charts because I can't I just right now I just can't watch it I had a buy signal right here which ended up just being a short cover and then my next area to look at for a possible entry was at 1235 was around this area all right so both of the actually bottom 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 bounce bottom 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 bounce this is where I have both of those signals on a, it was actually a five minute chart that I was watching on this. However, this thing did not, there was no, this was dead out of the gate. Um, and with the market, I don't even know where the market ended up today. I, it was down 350 at one point. So earnings disaster at the same time with the market pulling, you know, be careful buying something unless you see a massive push of buying volume come in here, which it never happened. I just don't see it anywhere to actually buy this thing. Um, 35, that I mean 35 to 71, that's the entire trade. 35.87 to 36.40. You know, I would have been paying myself there. So at the end, what's it doing now? It might have finally found a bottom here. Um, and if you were trying to build a position into the, down, into the uh, downside to go long, this would have been a tough one to do. Either way, 
here and here. I'm thinking out loud, people. So yeah, per my five minute, it was right around this area to buy. And then it was right around in this area to buy, but that would have been a tricky one. Not much there. Either way, uh, for me, it was about just under 500 bucks, but I was pretty much done uh, at the open. I tried to get some more out of Kara, but things had to go and I missed that. It was another point to the downside on that. That would have been some nice icing on the cake right there. Either way, uh, there were some big earnings that came out after the close today. It'll be interesting to see how this Kara plays out if they do an offering. So uh, <clears throat> for me, it was a good day for the time I had. And, you know, if you can't do this full time, there are, I try to get in the room central time. I'm, I try to get in there about by 630 or so. Sometimes I'm earlier, sometimes I'm later because I do work. But Janny is in there. Also, Janny is in there about 6 or 6.15, a good hour and a half sometimes before the bell. Now, trading pre-market is, it's kind of a different beast because the volume can be thin. If you rely on indicators to do your trading, you have to kind of put those aside because, because the volume's thin and indicators mostly are based on price action. Uh, spreads can be wacky, prices can jump around, but it's, you know, Kara, with the news like this and how much it was up, did plays like this happen every day? No, but there are other reasons that stocks are up or down too much, and there are ways to fade that high or bottom curl that low to get something. And if you can't watch the market all day, if you have to be at work 95, there's still potential if you can get into a broker that trades pre-market, Interactive Brokers opens up at four o'clock in the morning eastern time um i think their minimum is 10 grand to open an account e-trade think or swim i think are seven central if i'm not mistaken i don't know what time fidelity opens but uh trade i think doesn't open until the bell there's no pre or post market trading with them uh, i don't know about center point but if you have a center point account then you're probably way ahead of the game anyway but uh if you can if you can, if you don't have a lot of time, can't watch the market all day, there's stuff to do in this room pre-market also. Now, do some of the pre-market trades that we make make it to AJ's list? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, because in pre-market, the whole trade can be done. It could have already filled a gap one way or another, or the stock is just not moving. So plays like there are usually some biotechs usually it's the greasy biotechs that are up too much and you can fade them for a little bit but it doesn't happen every day not, it, not making any promises but there are instances where your trading can be done before the bell even opens and that's where i put some or a lot of my effort into i if you look at my twitter feed if you look at my twitter feed i'm in here this is early stuff okay this is that between that 6 and 6.30 window because sometimes I'm doing research before I even get in the room because I want to formulate a game plan. So I'll be tweeting stuff that I might be looking at during the day or pre-market and try to get my try to get things done basically before the bell because sometimes it doesn't always work out that way because sometimes there there's not a lot moving pre-market and you don't want to force anything, especially pre-market. The reason has to be there. But uh, if you only have a limited amount of time, but you have some pre-market hours, you know, give this room a shot and come into the room and see how we do things. So there's, you know, there's, there's small caps, there's options, there's large caps, there's swing trades, all in this room. So, and we all have our different trading style in here. Uh... Hopefully soon I'm going to have more time to devote more time to the room. Either way, give it a shot. It's a good place to be. There's no junk for sale. There's no DVD of 12,000 chart patterns to study from and memorize. Uh, so it's just fundamental, logical trading based on the chart and based on the news. So give it a shot. Trade smart. We'll see you tomorrow.